They said I wouldn't come back. They said Fitz that keep me from ending all. Episode 7? What episode 7? It ended at episode 6. But guess what? We're here again today and we have episode 7 back better than ever, maybe, with Jonah Hill being the one from keeping us from ending it all today. I feel like I have to say this every episode just because of the gap between them, but some of you may not be familiar with this series or what we do on it. Basically, we just take one person, today being Jonah Hill, and focus on their presence as a fashion icon and go over kind of pictures and then I give my thoughts on them and kind of uh, share my respects for them. The reason we don't have many episodes though is because they don't perform that well. I think it's probably just due to discovery of it with, with the title fits the key me from ending it all and all that stuff I, I feel like discovery for YouTube like people trying to search it probably aren't going to stumble upon this video it's just mostly the people who watch all the videos I upload will be the viewers for this so you know once again thank you guys but uh, yeah it, it doesn't really grow the channel at all so I usually put these on the back burner but I do, I do still enjoy doing them because this is kind of one of the things I'm more passionate in passionate about similar to streetwear startups but that does bring in a crowd uh, this I guess is just more something that I enjoy doing so I, I like to pump out an episode every now and then usually in between the streetwear startup seasons I kind of uh, try to churn one out but with that being said we will get into it as I said Jonah Hill is the man of honor today so you live under a rock and you ask me who is Jonah Hill Jonah Hill is definitely most famous for his acting uh, especially roles in things like super bad which he got arguably his breakout role I personally can't really recall anything that he was in before super bad but moving on from there, we have just huge movies he was in, things like 21 Jump Street, and obviously the sequel to it, 22 Jump Street, as well as his big part in The Wolf of Wall Street, where he starred alongside Leonardo DiCaprio. We also have other movies where he stars alongside a bunch of his friends, like Seth Rogen, James Franco, uh, Jay, however you pronounce his name, and uh, we can move on from there to movies like War Dogs and Moneyball with Brad Pitt, and then also, I think this was his directorial debut, mid-90s, maybe it wasn't, but he did in fact direct it. Like the title says, it was a really good capture of the mid-90s era and then the skateboarding scene that was popping up around then. So this is what he's known for, you know, he definitely started off as kind of like the joke guy in all these comedy films. But, you know, you look at this, we also have him in serious movies like Moneyball, which uh, was later in his career, I suppose. I think that was kind of in between stuff like Super Bad, 21 Jump Street, and then we had uh, War Dogs, and this is the end on the later side of it. So he did also kind of like, you know, still return to comedy. And then we also have his progression into being a director with mid 90s. So it does show a lot of growth. So that obviously shows a lot of growth, but that's not really the focus of this series. So we will be moving on. And next up, uh, just to touch a little bit more on growth or lack there of growth, I suppose the opposite, shrinkage. Just got to shout him out for his weight loss. Like I respect people so much that can go from just being, you know, having, you know, poor physical shape. I don't want to like hate on him, but, you know, being out of shape and then just go to, you know, completely transforming their body because whether it's you know mental health or you know physical health like this case when you're down in those ruts it's easy to kind of continue along that same path but it's a lot harder to pull yourself up and you know when you look at the shape he used to be in i think this is war dogs so not that long ago and then i think this is maybe a little bit earlier than war dogs and then we compare it to what he looks like nowadays i think he's in great shape and you know he's taking charge of his physical health and you know i really got to respect that i've got some friends who have gone through kind of the same thing and I, i've always just had such a you know high respect for them so shout out to him so i thought this would be a good transition out of his weight loss into some athletic clothes that he has worn we have a I think Phoenix Sun jersey on the left hand side and then a Palace jersey on the right hand side we will see more from Palace he's actually got a huge presence with Palace though it has kind of died down um, we will get into that a little bit more uh, on the oncoming slides but you know we have right here NBA jersey if it's not the Phoenix Suns I apologize I don't follow the NBA at all the outfit on the left I can't really get down with you got like the dress shoes the slacks and then kind of like the dress belt too mixed with the NBA jersey I think it's an odd pairing it, it looks 
all right, I guess. But to me, it's more of a drip just because it shows his comfortability, you know, show off the guns after his big weight loss. So uh, it's a drip for me. And look at the smile on his face, man. He's a happy dude. I, I just love to see it. The outfit on the right, I feel, is a little bit more cohesive and ties together better than uh, the, the one we previously talked about. Uh, we got some, I think, cuffed up or like rolled up joggers and then vans on the bottom, which I, I'm not crazy about the vans, but you know, you have Palace, the skateboarding uh, brand, and then you got vans known for, you know, skateboarding as well. So I guess it works. And then you have that Palace jersey, the Adidas collaboration. And we actually see him wearing a lot of Adidas moving forward as well, which we will cover once again. So uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover with this slide. So moving on, we have uh, sneakers, which I just brought up. <laughs> you may not know, and I myself actually was not aware of this until doing some research, finding some photos to put into these slides that Jonah Hill actually has his own Adidas superstar there on the top left. That was his shoe that they let him design. Uh, to what extent, I'm not exactly sure. We have superstar embroidered. There's like some uh, almost DIY stitching on the back and then you have some more stuff on the heel that's kind of customized. I myself really haven't ever been into this style or silhouette from Adidas, like the Stan Smiths and stuff. I just never really got into. But another thing I wanted to touch on was he was on an episode of Sneaker Shopping following his release of mid-90s. We have star of the film, Sonny Sulik, on the bottom right there that he did the shopping with. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go watch it. They have a really cool chemistry from shooting mid-90s together and, uh, you know, he really comes off as his mentor and his friend. So. Uh, it's kind of cool and then they do of course talk about their sneaker background a little bit more like i talked about earlier the palace and jonah hill connection is there this is actually from an advertisement he shot for the palace reebok collaboration they had i think this is the classic leather the silhouette we have the triferg up on the tongue and then some like custom branding on the laces as well usually they kept it kind of subtle and this one is definitely following that trend another thing to point out from this still is the palace p cap that jonah is wearing and it's very subtle, obviously, but I feel like Jonah's style is pretty subtle. Maybe that's why I respect it so much. He's not really wearing a ton of loud stuff, but um, he does like throw in a, a cool piece mixed with some kind of more quiet stuff. And uh, I do respect that. Maybe that's why I admire him so much. But this is kind of the segue for the next slide where we will talk about the palace gear the palace stuff he has been seen rocking the first image on the far left is from when he hosted saturday night live and he wore a palace i forget what it's called i know they have the p3d but this isn't the d maybe it's just the p3 is what they call it um, moving on we have another like p3 different colorway this time a short sleeve instead of a long sleeve where he's walking his dog and then moving on again he's also walking uh this time another dog and he has the palace uh, sweater on, the knit sweater, which actually this, this photo must have been the most recent one because uh, that one, I remember it coming out not too long ago, must have been like a year ago maybe in the last Ultimo, the last round of Ultimo collection. And then also, if you guys didn't notice, the jacket is also palace. We have the Triford down on the pocket on the bottom left here that we can see. So big drip. You know me, I don't really like puffer jackets, but I respect the outfit here. It's brought together really well. And then he's even got the blue Adidas's to tie it in together with the blue top and then blue jacket. I think it's a, it's a good outfit. And then lastly, we have this still on the far right, which is another screenshot or screen grab from a Palace Reebok collaboration advertisement that he starred in, which you can find these on YouTube, but he's just wearing a Palace P baseball cap. And I've always loved these, you know, like I said, but the last one, it's subtle. I do like this brim style more, where it's more kind of like the duck bill, whereas the last one was a little bit flatter. I definitely uh, side with this style more. And if we're gonna talk about Palace, we gotta talk about Supreme. He's definitely much less into Supreme, obviously hasn't really done the advertisements for it like he has for Palace, so that backing isn't there, but that's not to say that he doesn't enjoy it or dabble in it a little bit. So this far lift outfit, I love the coat, and we'll talk about these overcoats or like kind of trench coats that he wears a little bit later in the video, but you can see him with the Supreme shopping bag, you know, they'd send these out in orders all the time. Recently, they cut back, but obviously, you know, if you still shop in-store, they're going to give you one to carry your goods out in, 
And also, you know, take note of the Adidas uh, sock runner or whatever it's called that he's wearing. But moving on, we have this big Supreme Spellout hat in the middle that he wore on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Obviously not the greatest picture. This is like in toaster quality, but uh, we get the preem on the side. I don't remember when this came out. It, it must have been a while ago. This looks like an old photo. And then on the far right, we have this kind of like stonewash supreme camp cap that he's seen wearing other than that i couldn't really find too many images of jonah wearing supreme but i didn't investigate too hard i'm sure uh, other photos definitely exist more blatant photos i'm sure you know wearing a box logo probably not a box logo but i'm sure he's worn supreme tees like i mentioned now we have the top coat the trench coat the overcoat whatever the technically correct term is for this type of jacket I never know what exactly to call them. We have this slide featuring some of the pictures. I think this is the one in the front center that we saw in the last slide. And then I believe these two on each side are the same one. Just the lighting looks a little bit different in each of the pictures. You know, obviously a little bit more sunny, a little bit more darker, more towards uh, nighttime in the far right one. But <laughs> as far as the full outfits go, you know, if you would have thrown on some long pants, some you know, anything other than shorts, I would have gotten down with that. This is like a like a grout fit almost. He's got the just dope coat and then kind of just threw everything else together like he's lounging or something but it, it looks cozy nonetheless he looks comfortable very comfortable outfit in the center picture he's done up a lot nicer and a little bit more studious than maybe we've seen in the, a lot of the other pictures where it's more towards like streetwear this is more towards uh i'm not exactly sure what i would call it but you know like i don't know preppy i don't feel like that's the right category to throw it in but he's done up very nice and uh like hipstery maybe i guess you got the big thick beanie everything's fully buttoned he's got the undershirt buttoned all the way the overcoats buttoned all the way then got some jeans just chilling with some nice shoes as well i guess the far right one also kind of leans towards this more like cleaner or preppy you know dress up streetwear style where he's got you know just a clean uh no graphic on this sweater and then he's also got some chinos cuffed at the bottom and then i think he's actually wearing his own superstars which is you know a big flex just wearing your own custom shoes <laughs> your own adidas collaboration uh, a big move so this is actually the last slide that we have we're going to talk about some of the vintage stuff that he's worn right here we have a bunch of band tees we have the dead kennedys on the left and then once again he's seen wearing the chinos this time not cuffed looking a little bit more baggy than the last pair but uh, a good fit you know uh, old vintage tee kind of distressed i myself definitely think this marilyn manson one that he's seen rocking on the right looks a lot better I like the glasses too. We have the like kind of rose tint to them, which plays in well with the font. And even the glow that this graphic has for the Marilyn Manson tee kind of gives off this like red uh, vibe. So the, the rose tint on the glasses pulls this together nicely. He's looking a little rugged. He's got the scruff. I think that, you know, plays into the vintage maybe a little bit. Uh, I like it though. I think this is a good fit. That's a really cool tee. A lot of the old Marilyn Manson merch too has just like crazy graphics like this one. And a lot of the vintage pieces that people will find go for just crazy amounts on Grailed and other resale sites. Like I said, this is the last slide and I'm trying to maybe move towards more condensed episodes for this. I guess this is just all the time that I had to put in for this specific episode. Whereas, you know, the earlier ones were like 30, 40 minutes where we'd really dive into a specific individual but i feel like this is more uh digestible for viewers so maybe maybe we'll try messing around with it again it's, it's always just kind of whatever i feel like doing uh for the episode especially since there's such a gap in them like i was mentioning but i think overall for jonah hill he's not really innovative for streetwear but just the icon that he is and just the lovable dude that he is you know from all these movies that we know him from and enjoy seeing him in it's just awesome to also see him putting together some like good outfits wearing these good pieces you know it, it seems like everybody has dabbled into fashion a little bit especially if you're famous you know everybody every famous person has been on sneaker shopping and is like a sneakerhead to some point you know they brag about whatever they're into but i feel like jonah definitely pulls a lot of this off does he have a stylist maybe i don't know i feel like he wouldn't just because of 
a lot of the work that he's done before and maybe some of the like interviews that I've seen, especially for mid 90s, like it, it kind of seems like this would probably, or how he presents himself would probably be something that he wants to put together completely on his own. And then all of his work with stuff like Palace and Adidas, I feel like he would probably pride himself in you know, finding his own clothes and expressing himself in that category um, on his own. That's all I've got for you guys though. Who do you want to see in a future episode? As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for <laughs> episode eight.